Ten years after his breakout EP So Far Gone, Drake's legacy is in a firm yet complicated position. Undeniably, Drake is one of hip-hop's biggest game changers ever, and has a good chance of becoming the best-selling hip-hop artist of all time. But despite his big status, and in some ways because of his status, the shift in the masses from celebrating Drake to hating on Drake was quick and intense. In particular, we will look at how increasing commercial success, ghostwriting allegations, and constant time in the limelight have changed the popular opinion of Drake from a goofy, non-threatening Canadian hitmaker to one of hip-hop's most clown rappers. As we know, Drake is much of a pop artist today as he is a hip-hop and an R&B artist. But despite having obvious crossover appeal from the start, he resided more in the hip-hop realm than the pop realm for years. His first two projects ever, Room for Improvement and Comeback Season, were mostly exhibitions of Drake's rapping ability, including remixes of hits such as Kick Push and Barry Bonds Freestyle. While Room for Improvement did give us Replacement Girl, Drake's singing and melodic raps were still seen as an addition to the rap's rather than his main skill set. When the Seminole So Far Gone dropped, he gave us some of his best rapping songs ever, like Say What's Real and Fear. He also fully debuted his sentimental nature and R&B tendencies, and they were either seen as a conflict with his rapping or the thing that elevated him past other rappers. The hip hop community spent the next four to five years waiting on every Drake feature, every loose song, and every album for the verse that would convince him that he was the best rapper out, especially with Kendrick Lamar putting the pressure on. Drake responded to this challenge with determination, giving us some of the most memorable verses of the decade, including his first verses in Over and Headlines, his feature on Stay Scheming, 5AM in Toronto, and Zero to 100. Basically, up until Views, Drake's rapping was quality enough and consistent enough to keep him in the rap goat conversation. Even Joe Budden in his infamous love-hate relationship with Drizzy argued that Drake was at one point on a seven-year run of no whack verses in a Duppy Freestyle episode of his podcast. Debatable, but still significant coming from Budden. Of course, during his run of quality raps, Drake still dropped plenty of his trademark simp hits including Marvin's Room and Hold On, We're Going Home. But along with Meek Mill's ghostwriting accusation, which we'll discuss later, the event that really took Drake out of the rap goat conversation and into the pop world was his release of Views. With a 20 song track list and heavy dancehall influence in the production, Drake's fourth official LP Views was the project that cemented his status as a global pop star. While Drake's projects and singles have been doing pop numbers for quite some time before Views, the album's sound and focus points, the singles One Dance, Controla, and too good show Drake's clear intention to take over the charts instead of trying to win over rap fans. As discussed in a previous Hip Hop Madness video, how Kendrick made Drake give up on a classic album, the language Drake used in social media and his lyrics to discuss his artistic ambitions around the time views dropped had much more to do with going number one on the Hot 100 and celebrating the streaming and sales records he was setting. With lines like, got the billboard melodies, rap is something I do on the side. On 2 Chainz record Big Amount in 2016, it was clear that trying to convince the rap world he deserved consideration as a great rapper was no longer worth it to him. As he's gone on to put out more playlists like albums with bigger commercial ambitions, much of the rap world finally decided to dislike Drake as an artist. It's no secret that the uncovering of Quentin Miller did a lot to damage Drake's image as a rapper, given hip hop's intense standard of writing 100% of your verses to be considered one of the greatest. While Meek Mill and Drake have since squashed their beef, and we now know Meek's infamous tweet came out of a moment of pettiness, it doesn't change the fact that Drake's verse on Meek's single Rico was written by Quentin Miller, and Miller is uncredited on the song. And despite Miller being credited on several songs from Drake's If You're Reading This Is Too Late, leaked reference tracks of the song's 10 bands and Know Yourself showed Quentin played a significant role in writing the songs. Quentin Miller's take on how things went down has been very consistent, including assertions that he did not ghostwrite on If You're Reading This and that the album was mostly done by the time Miller was involved. In a pushback against the viral story that Drake did not write his own raps on If You're Reading This, Miller insisted that he watch Drake pen the bar heavy 6pm in New York and even freestyle the song Madonna. Despite testimonies from the man himself, the story grew too large for anyone to double back. Learning Drake had a ghostwriter is comparable to knowing Barry Bonds took steroids on his way to the all-time home run record, or that the 73-9 Warriors got Durant. When you're at the top, the expectations of doing it the right way are raised higher. 
even if the talent and previous glory can't be denied. It only takes a small slip up for people to put an asterisk on a current winner's accomplishments. In the rap world, one ghost written verse and a couple of reference tracks was enough for many to remove Drake from the rap goat conversation and continue to speculate that he doesn't write as many lyrics as we think he does. Of course, the ghostwriting allegations came just two months before the Drake and Future project What a Time to Be Alive, and less than a year before the release of the commercial Behemoth Views. If Drake wasn't entirely sure about going full pop, the chaos caused by the Meek Mill beef flipped that switch for him. Soon after, the boy hit a level of fame and success that solidified him as one of the most hated people in the entertainment business. Drizzy has always been great at being a celebrity. His very first PR and marketing accomplishment was turning the jokes about him being soft, emotional, light-skinned, and a former actor into the strongest aspects of his brand. The way he was able to roll with the punches of trendy jokes such as Drake's the type of memes and the Drake crying animation and references to his past as wheelchair Jimmy are impressive. By doubling down on these comedic narratives of himself, songs like Marvin's Room, Find Your Love, and Hold On We're Going Home became even more infectious. Each of the songs just mentioned have gone at least three times platinum in the United States. Having handled the mockery of his masculinity, love life, and thespian past, there wasn't much more anyone could say about Drake to keep his persona from growing as large as it has. From lint rolling courtside at a Raptors game to jokingly being called soft by Katy Perry to even allegedly being peed on in a movie theater by a TI associate, the only dig at Drake's persona that has really disrupted his time as the biggest rapper in the world is Pusha T's secret child reveal. But by the time Story of Added On dropped, Drake's viral prowess was already out of control. By tapping into genres such as Afrobeats, Dancehall, and Grime, Drake has been able to give the same stories a fresher sonic foundation to be served on. Jokes of his sentimentality and softness have been replaced by jokes of his culture hopping, lingual adaption, and increasingly hardened tough guy image. The 2018 version of the Drake type of memes are the British Roadman and Jamaican Drake memes. Chris Rock accurately pointed out in a 2014 Sway interview that Drake's image, unlike most successful mainstream rappers, has gone from vulnerable to tough, since everyone's first experience with Drake's music and image is that of a hopeless romantic who takes subliminal shots, seeing Drake bulk up and talk more shit is even more reason to hate him. Then there are Drake's ties to the sports world, the most notable being his role as a Toronto Raptors team ambassador since 2013. The improbable and history-making playoff run of the 2019 NBA champion Toronto Raptors have given Drake even more of a platform to be talked about 24-7 putting much of his goofy persona on display as he cheered for his hometown team while trolling the Golden State Warriors stars, many of whom we know to be his friends. Along with the pop shift in his own music and the growth of his personal brand through sports partnerships and cross-cultural associations, Drake's Midas touch for feature verses have been as strong as ever. Appearing on songs such as Black Boy JB's Look Alive, Bad Bunny's M.I.A., and Meek Mill's Going Bad, Drake has been on 6 of the top 10 Hot 100 hits as a featured artist since 2018, including Travis Scott's Sickle Mode going number 1. Whether it's a beef, a feature, a corny line, a viral music video, or a courtside clip, people are forced to talk about Drake. And whether people hate him or not, hip-hop fans collectively love talking about him. It's this ability to take jabs at his persona and turn flaws into attractions that makes it so easy for Drake's face and music to be everywhere. Unsurprisingly, a person who's constantly in your face, even when you aren't really trying to see him, is easier to dislike than a person who isn't always the center of attention. While personal reasons for disliking Drake may vary, the collective agreement within hip-hop that it's cool to hate Drake is firmly rooted in his shifting approach to music, the stain of ghostwriting allegations, and his constantly present name and face. Despite the current attitude around Drake, many of today's top hip-hop artists have countered the idea that Drake deserves the hate that he gets. Schoolboy Q in a Hot 97 interview this past spring claimed that Drake is not only an underrated rapper, but one of the greats. In a Jimmy Fallon appearance promoting his 2017 SNL hosting gig, Chance the Rapper claimed, We live in a time where people are ashamed to say how much they love Drake or enjoy what he does. 21 Savage also threw praise Drizzy's way in 2018, saying that he doesn't get enough credit for going out of his way to pull a new artist up every year. While much of the criticism Drake faces regarding his music and image is valid, the praise he gets from his peers and real rappers, as said by Peter Rosenberg, has to weigh into the discussion. The truth of Drake's artistic credibility and likability, like most truths, probably falls somewhere in the middle of these two viewpoints. 
This has been a Hip Hop Madness original. Make sure to stay tuned and stay up to date with everything we got going on by hitting that subscribe button and notification bell. Oh, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Hip Hop Madness and join the movement.